بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله In this uh, video uh, we study a, uh, an interesting uh, example or application of the steady state solution how useful is this steady state solution uh, today's uh, application is the vibration isolation vibration isolation or the base excitation this is the opposite of vibration isolation what do we mean by vibration isolation? How we use it? How we use the steady state solution uh, in order to get this uh, uh, interesting application the, to isolate the vibration? Okay, so we will talk about two things which are very similar in the, um, in the uh, solution. Force excitation and motion excitation. Well, what, do I, what do I mean by these two? We will talk about it in a minute. What do we mean by transmissibility? Transmissibility of force or transmissibility of motion. These are the two types. And how to design the vibration isolation, okay, for these two uh, examples. All right. Now, there are two types of vibration isolation. There are two types of vibration isolation. The first one, uh, which is the most common for you as a mechanical engineer in the field, especially in the petroleum industry or petrochemicals, when you have a machine, and there is a, and you want to isolate the forces coming from the machine going to the foundation. For example, if you have uh, a pump or a compressor or a turbine and it's uh, vibrating, what does, it, what does it mean vibrating? There are forces from the machine. These forces, if it's transmitted to the uh, foundation, uh, it will break the foundation. If it's a concrete, we're talking about very high vibrations. Okay, it's a very large. Uh, we're talking about tons, huh? tons of weight. Okay, so we want to isolate the vibration or the uh, uh, forces coming from the machine going to the foundation. Okay, we call this force excitation. The other one is the opposite. When we have the uh, uh, motion of the uh, foundation and the motion is transmitted to the machine, we want to isolate these, uh, these uh, uh, vibrations also. Okay. Uh, an example of this, the uh, precise instruments in the lab. If you have a very precise instrument in the lab and you want to uh, isolate any small motion coming from the floor from your steps, for example, okay, any vibration from the floor, you want to isolate it going to the machine. So we want to design an isolator. So an isolator, it's like what? It's a, um, a spring and damper. Spring and damper. You want to design the spring and the damper okay, in order to isolate this motion. Okay, let's focus on the first one. Okay, force coming from the machine, unbalanced force coming from the machine, going to the floor. We want to design an isolator, a spring and damper. Okay, so uh, we want to focus on the transfer function. What will be the transfer function here? Transfer function, which is similar to the what we call transmissibility. So transmissibility is like the transfer function. Okay, for example, if you talk about force excitation, you're talking about the exciting force is your input coming from the machine like the forcing function and the output the transmitted force going to the floor so the amplitude of the exciting force the input the output amplitude we're going to call this transmissibility okay we will show you how to get this transmissibility for the other one the motion excitation is the opposite the input is the amplitude of the foundation okay the the vibration of the floor okay which is a motion, okay, not a force, motion, we will as, uh, consider as a motion. And the output will be the motion of the, vib of the machine, okay, the vibration of the machine. This is the output, okay. We will call it also transmissibility, okay. Our job in the next uh, examples is to reduce the transmissibility, make it as low as possible in order to reduce the transmitted either force or tra transmitted excitation. Okay, let's focus on this one, this example. This is my example. This is my simple model. This is my machine. It's a mass with unbalanced force. This is my forcing function like an unbalanced force. Okay. This is the floor. This is the is isolator I want to design. It's a spring and damper, spring and damper. Okay, so how are we going to design this? We need to get the transmissibility, the transfer function. We call it transmissibility. How to get it? First, you need to get the equation of motion and then you will derive the uh, transfer function where the input is the uh, this force the unbalanced force or the forcing function 
and the output, the force going to the floor. How much is the force going to the floor? It's going to be Bx dot plus Kx. How did I get this from the uh, free body diagram? What's the force here? Bx dot. What's the force here? It's uh, a K, uh, uh, X. Okay, let me use uh, a laser pointer. Maybe it's more clear. Okay. So this is my uh, transmitted force to the floor. This is going to be my output. Okay. And the equation of motion of the system, we did this in chapter 3. It's going to be mx double dot plus bx dot plus kx equal to the forcing function. Okay. Take the Laplace transform of both. You have now two algebraic equations. What is the input will be? It will be this force, the forcing function. P, let's call it P of S. And what will be the output? This force or this one, which will we, we're going to call it capital F of S. Now you can do this using chapter four. You get to get the transfer function where the input P of S, the output F of S, and this is going to be your transfer function. Now how to get the transmissibility? Transmissibility. We're going to use chapter 9, how to get the magnitude of the steady state solution. You need to get the magnitude of the sinusoidal transfer function, which we did in chapter 9, the beginning of chapter 9, in the past uh, uh, couple of videos. Okay, Get the magnitude and multiply by the force of the forcing function. Now, we're going to assume the forcing function equal to a unit, just one number one. Why? Because next, we're going to see how much the transmitted force as we change the uh, running frequency, okay? Assuming unit uh, forcing function. So just get the magnitude of the sinusoidal transfer function and multiply by one, it will get you the transmissibility. And in this case, the transmissibility will be the square root of one plus two zeta. How did I get this two zeta from here to here? You divide by capital M, the denominator by capital M to get the solution in the standard form. Okay, so you can do this or you can uh, derive it from here directly. So here I just divided by M, okay, and I call capital omega to also I divided by uh, the natural frequency. So capital omega here is the natural frequency, is the running frequency, this one, divided by the natural frequency of the system. Okay, all right. So you can use this one or you can use this one. All right, same thing. Okay. I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to go next and try to uh, derive, uh, sorry, draw okay, the transmissibility versus the capital omega. What is capital omega again? Capital omega is the, let me write it here, capital omega. Capital omega is equal to omega over omega n. What's omega? Omega is the running frequency, the forcing frequency. What is omega n? The natural frequency of the system. Okay? So, so from here to here, divide by capital M to change it to the standard form, and then divide by omega n to change it to capital omega. Okay? Nothing much done here. So this is my transmissibility again. I want to draw the transmissibility versus the uh, omega, which is omega over omega n. This is not going to change. What's going to change? The input frequency. So when the input frequency equal to zero, capital omega will be equal to zero. If this is equal to zero, okay, this will be zero, zero, zero. You will get one over one, which is going to be number one. So you will start from number one transmissibility. Okay. If you increase omega, okay, what will happen to the transmissibility? It will increase, increase. And by the way, this is the our case is zeta between zero and one. Not, this is a typo, mistake, 0 and 1, zeta between, under damped, huh? This is system without damper, we're not talking about this system, we're talking about this system, so, which, which is similar to most of the system we see in the field, under damped, zeta between 0 and 1. So what will happen to the transmissibility as you increase the input frequency? It will increase, 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 until it will reach the peak. What is with this peak? Do you, do you know what's this peak? How much? How much omega here? Huh? Omega is equal to how much? Omega, this is omega, which is equal to omega d. Huh? Omega equal to omega d. Okay, if you divide it by omega n, you will get omega, right? 
So here, omega equal to omega d, the damped natural frequency. This is the critical speed, we call it, okay, or the, uh, the resonance. What will happen to the transmissibility if you increase the uh, speed of the uh, forcing function? It will get less and less and less and less until you reach this point, which is equal to 1 again, and then it will become less than 1, less than 1. So what, is, what does it mean, this higher than 1, less than 1? What does it mean, transmissibility? Transmissibility means what? Means if you have uh, one in Newton, one in Newton coming from the uh, input uh, for, of, or input forcing function, okay? If you have one Newton coming from here, how much Newton will be transmitted to the floor if the transmissib is, uh, transmissibility is equal to one? It will be one. So at low speed, you will ha as you increase the speed of the uh, input uh, frequency, you will increase the transmitted force. So here, for example, one point, uh, uh, maybe 1.2, okay? So at low speed, at low speed, if you have one Newton coming from the machine, how much Newton will be transmitted to the floor at slow speed? It will be 1.2, for example, higher than one, right? At high speed here, it's like how much the transmissibility here? This is like 0.8, right? Zero point, what does it mean, 0 0.8? If you have one Newton coming from the machine, how much a Newton you will feel on the floor? 80%. So it's like, it's going to be like 0.8 Newton. So did you reduce the transmitted force? Yes, we did. So this is the only area you can work on or design your isolator. How to determine this point? Okay. How do you, you're going to solve for this equation when transmissibility equal to one. Okay. So if you solve for omega, Okay, it depends on omega and zeta, right? Zeta is fixed. So it depends on your, you cannot change the zeta. Or you, you can change it, of course, because you are, you are designing the isolator. So you, either you can change the zeta, the damping, how much damping in the system, or the speed of the uh, running uh, uh, or forcing function. Two things will determine uh, the uh, transmissibility. Zeta, okay, and the running frequency. So the running frequency, you can, uh, you can design it at high speed. For example, if you have a compressor in your home, the compressor of the uh, refrigerator, what is the speed you should design the isolator? Are you going to design it for high speed or low speed? Of course, high speed. And this is what you hear when, you, when, you, when the compressor of the refrigerator in your home, for example, when it starts, you hear uh, a noise coming, right? And then the noise will go down and then it will become quiet. What, what did happen? The running speed of the compressor of the, uh, of the refrigerator start to increase, increase, and then it will pass the critical speed where you're gonna hear the resonance. And then it will get lower and lower and lower until you reach your design point for the speed, which is higher than this point, okay? Also, you can increase the damping. If you increase the damping, okay, what will happen to the uh, transmissibility? It will get less, but not much. But here, if you play with the uh, uh, damping, you can only affect the resonance uh, amplitude, get it smaller. This is what you can uh, control. But to control the isolation, maybe the best thing to do is the speed. Zeta will not ch change the uh, a transmitted force very much uh, at high speed, okay? So how to get this point? This point, solve for one. So you, if you fix, if you have fixed zeta, uh, uh, you, uh, omega will be either zero or square root of two, okay? You can use the calculator. Zero here, we're not going to talk about this point, we're talking about this point, which is square root of two, okay? So this is the root, uh, square root of two. So you need a uh, omega two, you need a speed, which will give you higher than square root of 2 when you divide it by omega n, okay? This is your design area, okay? This is what you're going to do here, okay? Speed should be, you should, should be higher than, uh, sorry, higher, not lower, should be higher than, higher than square root of 2. This is the design, huh? And then you will get your uh, 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 
your objective. Okay. All right. This is the first example. The second example is the opposite. Okay. The opposite. Here we have uh, transmitted uh, uh, not force, transmitted amplitude. It's still like vibration from the floor going to the machine. You want to design the isolator. So you need to get the equation of motion. It will be a little bit different. Okay. We're going to use chapter three, just like we did. Here, the input will be what? The input to the transfer function we're looking for, the input is this uh, amplitude, and the output is the amp amplitude of the machine. Okay. So look at the transfer function that we, we, we got here. Is this similar to the transfer function that we get from the previous example? It is the same transfer function, exactly the same. What does it mean exactly the same? Yes, we will get the same transmissibility. It's exactly the same. So what does it mean exactly the same transmissibility? That means the design, the design process will be exactly the same, just like we did here. We're gonna do the same procedure. Nothing will be different, all right? So it doesn't matter for the motion excitation or force excitation, the design procedure it will be the same. And that will be all for this section.